One of the hardest things about starting a stake pool is getting the delegation. When I started the stake pool, I, it, it was quite an easy process, like setting up the technical aspects, the, the nodes itself, making it talk to each other, security, all those aspects. If you've worked on servers before, if you built things for websites like web servers, piece of cake. It's really, really easy. The hardest bit is gaining delegates and that delegation to actually be pointed towards your state pool so you can mint those blocks. That is incredibly hard and you really have to work your butt off to actually get that delegation in, earn the trust of the delegates and give them some incentives to actually delegate too. Now, Ada Link are working on a project where they're engaging with NFT projects and whatnot to get and contain a bunch of delegation to make that possible. So staples can partner up with NFT projects, which usually have a large amount of ADA because they've collected it through their uh, minting process of their NFTs and then delegate it towards a particular stake pool. And this then creates enough delegation for these pools to actually mint blocks and do some really cool things. So it's essentially a matchmaking site for large amounts of delegation and state pool operators. Really cool. There are a couple of projects that do this type of thing and I did an interview previously with uh, Reese from Stolic Pool and he was talking about uh, a smart contract and DAO around this so people can stake to a smart contract and then the DAO around it would point to various state pools. So there's many, many different mechanisms around this to make this all possible and Adalink is a pretty cool one and I like what they're trying to do, the whole matchmaking thing. Let's get into this interview. I have two special guests joining me on this episode from Ada Link, a really cool project that will help not only NFT projects, but also state pool operators in the Cardano ecosystem. I'm pretty excited to learn a little bit more about this one and I have Gisela and her moment joining me on this one to talk all about it. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank, thank you, you so us. much. All right. So I'd like to learn a little bit about your crypto journey and how you got into the Cardano ecosystem and then get into how you guys came up with this idea and what kind of problem you're solving that's uh, in the Katana ecosystem. So Gisela, should we start with you first and how you got into the crypto All right. So uh, in my case, I uh, when I first hear, hear about uh, blockchain and crypto was in 2017 because a friend uh, started to learn about, uh, about it. And... Uh, and he uh, began to invest in the bull market of that year. Uh, but at that time, I didn't put too much attention to it. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, last, this last, last bull run that my sister uh, started to, to mine ETH. And it got me curious about uh, how it works. And so I started to, to use different blockchains. Uh, I started to use uh, the XRP Ledger, Algorand blockchain, uh, Ethereum, of course, and, and Cardano. Uh, but for, for that time, uh, Algorand and XRP Ledger didn't have too much to do in it. Uh, so I experimented in Ethereum in, in Cardano and you know who won the, the battle, right? <laughs> it was Cardano, obviously. <laughs> and so uh, that's when, that was my starting point to read about Cardano. And uh, I started to read about the architecture of the blockchain and I saw that uh, it has a lot, a lot of possibilities and it, it has a solid foundation so all the social institutions in general, if we build, uh, if, if they build on it, 
and on this technology, uh, they can be certainly more efficient and more transparent. And that's what uh, got my attention of Cardano. All right, and uh, Mahmoud, what about your story? How did you get into the crypto and Cardano space? Well, it's a little bit actually kind of similar to Hasila's. Uh, I was introduced to uh, the concept of Bitcoin when I was uh, around the same time, um, maybe a little bit earlier, like 2015. Uh, but I didn't enter, I didn't buy any Bitcoin. I was really interested in the mathematics of it. So I was, I was just doing, uh, I was trying to actually uh, break the encryption or, uh, that <laughs> is working on. Uh, and it really got me more interested. And I, I was really uh, uh, trusting the, the ledger of Bitcoin because I was not able to break it. I even uh, tried with my uh, colleague, uh, with my uh, friends in college. We would have this, um, uh, you know, uh, just a bunch of uh, people uh, from college because my um, background is in robotics. So, we were just trying to, to break this encryption and to prove that it's an actually, it's a scam. So I was not actually believing in it in the beginning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But then I forgot about it. Uh, but last summer with the bull run, uh, I started hearing back about DeFi uh, and I wanted some uh, passive income or some uh, retirement plans for me in the future. So I read about, of course, whenever you hear DeFi, you get introduced to Ethereum first. So yeah. I studied Ethereum a bit. Um, I saw that I can actually provide some liquidity and maybe give some loans. Uh, but I then started searching for the other um, cryptocurrencies and I went from uh, the blockchains that have the bigger uh, market cap. So I saw Cardano and I, uh, th the first thing that actually got my attention is that it's, um, it's younger. So I thought it might be more beneficial if I started in a, in a younger ecosystem. Uh, but then the more I read about it, the more I got, uh, it's the same uh, idea that, uh, or the same concept that happened with Bitcoin because I saw the, uh, the similarities the UTXO model uh, and the, how the encryption is done. And I know for a fact, because I tried uh, to actually uh, prove the security of Bitcoin to be uh, not that robust. I was uh, sure that same thing is going to be for Cardano that is very, it's actually very robust and secure. Uh, so I entered the space. Uh, I was into, I really liked the staking idea. It was amazing. So, I'm going to get around 4%, 5%, and I'm still keeping all my um, assets. And from there, I just kept digging deeper, deeper. Um, I, I was introduced to NFTs, uh, and I met Hasila yeah. that way, and we became uh, crypto yes. friends. <laughs> 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 uh, and later down the road, uh, she had the idea, she and her sister, uh, Natalia, which is the third member of the team, uh, had this great idea, uh, and the, and we started discussing it. That is so cool that um, you know you all bonded over your discovery into the Cardano and crypto industry. Now, obviously, you're deeply in the Cardano ecosystem now, and uh, you guys have identified a, a problem within the ecosystem in general, and this is around uh, attracting stake or delegation to various mm -hmm. stake pools, et cetera. Can we talk a little bit about the problem, what uh, you have discovered and uh, talk a little bit about that for people that don't understand and know it, and then about your solution, AdaLink, what you created and how that kind of solves that problem. We saw, well, right with the, uh, we are active member of this ecosystem and we saw that the, uh, SPOs with more popularity have more delegation, right? And so we want to uh, find a way to uh, distribute uh, the the ADA in the ecosystem better. And so we 
with Adeline, what we want to create is a, an SPO online marketplace platform so that SPOs and NFT creators and capital delegation promoters, aka whales, uh, can create connections and and basically these uh, delegation promoters then uh, help SPOs with the marketing side and and basically uh, try to give them more visibility in the ecosystem so more people delegate to them uh, so people are gonna be able to find SPOs, create uh, alliances with them, uh, share SPO margin rewards, ask commission rewards, and that's what we intend to do. All right. Okay. That sounds interesting. I was trying to work out what's the incentive for users there. And you said share rewards. So this must be a, a little bit of an, an extra on top of the regular delegation rewards. So let's uh, talk a little bit about that and the technicals behind it as well, how it's all set up, how it works. Mahmoud, could you talk so, a little bit about uh, those aspects? Yes, definitely. So um, to to continue with what Hasila was saying, uh, the, the problem was that uh, many SPOs who are really uh, good at technicalities are not getting this exposure. So So the idea is to give them a platform where they can uh, register and uh, and show themselves uh, when later on NFT project owners um, can join this platform and see these um, SPOs. Now, uh, th the main idea is that uh, NFT project owners have uh, a very good exposure, specifically with their uh, holders. Um, and we did. Uh, we ran the numbers. We actually extracted um, some information from the blockchain, and we uh, had this. Um, we had this list of, of main projects, the, the big, um, the big, uh, famous ones. And we saw that on average, the project, the, the cumulative ADA, let's say, of a project is around six million to twelve million ADA. If you combine all the um, wallet holders, uh, so the idea. Uh, became or from a technical point of view if a if a project can actually promote a specific spo or a specific stake pool to their holders then uh, we can actually technically track um who uh, the delegators that that are coming from a specific nft project given that we can know and the policy id uh, and therefore we can know the percentage of the total delegate uh, compared to the total delegation coming from that specific project, and hence you uh, we can decide um, how much each NFT project is helping a given uh, SPO. So the reward sharing part uh, is about sharing the margin, um, the margin reward that's coming uh, to the stake pool. You know, uh, it's a it's a, a parameter that can be set between 0% and potentially 100, but on average, it's around 0% to 5%, the, what is uh, in the market right now. So they can actually share this percentage uh, with the NFT projects that can help them. Um, so yeah, so that's the main, um, uh, let's say, reward sharing um, uh, protocol that we are uh, aiming for in the big, at, at the start of uh, the platform. Okay, that sounds really good. It's just that little bit extra on the top to really pad out, I guess, the rewards that you get. Because like you said, on average, it's for roughly around 4% mm -hmm. um, for a good operator pool. So just to have that little bit more on top, maybe 4.2, 4.3%, mm -hmm. just really boost things out, just makes it really, really nice. So I really yeah. love that approach. Is it done and with? Uh, to add to it, um, we already see that a lot of uh, NFT projects already have their own pools. Like uh, we can uh, mention Yumi, uh, we can mention Clay, right? Uh, they, it, 
Yeah. Maybe they have this to have an extra income and maybe they have someone that has uh, have the technical knowledge to do the stake pool, but maybe a lot of uh, other projects, NFT projects, uh, don't want to rely only on royalties or 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 a second drop. So they can use uh, our platform to get that extra income. And actually, they ah, right. can uh, they can contribute to the centralization too with their uh, with their help. Yeah, that is really cool. Now, would this be done with smart contracts or something like through the marketplace? Like, uh, how does that mark um, that mechanic work behind mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So the the in the beginning we had this uh, idea is that to start from the basics. So in the uh, let's say Idlink version one, it's not going to be uh, using smart contracts. It's actually going to be uh, the, the the platform will do all the um, hidden you know. Um, calculations, it's going to pull all the information from blockchain, and it's going to prepare for each SPO um, their transactions that they need to send uh, at the beginning or at the end of each epoch. Now, uh, it's because the um, the Ouroboros protocol sends, um, you know, it's automatically sends for uh, the stake pool operators their um, rewards. Now, uh, of course, you can uh, make a smart contract that can uh, be um, you, that can delegate to a stake pool. But the idea is that each time you um, an alliance or uh, a new NFT uh, project comes or adds to the uh, SPO, uh, then this smart contract needs to be uh, rewritten, and a new delegation is going to uh, register on the blockchain. So. In order to make sure that uh, we really uh, find a good solution, a fluid solution for this uh, uh, particular issue, we decided to actually uh, build the basic of it and build the exposure and make people uh, at the beginning um, relaxed and trust the um, platform in general. And we also will have the time uh, once the the basically say version one start rolling and people seeing its effectiveness. We will be at the, in the meantime behind the scenes working on implementing smart contracts to make it even uh, more uh, first trustless and then uh, becomes uh, more actually um, efficient. Okay, that uh, I think that's a good approach. Get something to market as quickly as possible, and uh, something that's really easy for SBOs to to work with. Uh, I, I could see that really relying on the state pool operator signing those transactions, though, and, yes, exactly. uh, and, ma and yeah. making sure that they do their part. Or you know, I. I I'll be terrible at this, to be honest. If I was an <laughs> SBO that had to sign at every epoch, I, I'd I'd forget. You know, I, I forget at the best of times. So uh, that, that I'm assuming you have to work through that flow and uh, mm -hmm. maybe a point system or a scoring system for how prompt the SPO is for paying out those rewards. Be uh, quite sure. interesting on how you guys do that. Those uh, type of aspects. Now, uh, how many people are on your team working on this project? So we are three. Uh, uh, we are the three co-founders. Um, so, uh, there's Matt Muth that is the developer and the community yep. manager. And there's Natalia that is the project manager. She's a filmmaker and, and video editor. Uh, she has directed and supervised, uh, the departments of productions of different, uh, media projects and has a lot of, of experience with uh, film, uh, television, uh, promotional campaigns, yes. Is uh, she the one that did um, your video that's on the website? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> All right. <Cool. laughs> All right. Just, uh, okay. Well, uh, for anyone that wants to check it out, I'll put links to it uh, as references. It's on Vimeo as well, so you can check that one out. Now, I've, I noticed somewhere also that um, uh, have you already partnered up with some NFT projects? Because I saw some links and references to some interesting projects that I hadn't seen before. Have you gone to that stage yet where you're actually engaging with um, partners? Well, actually, the, the, the actually good part is that um, during this year when I started, uh, when I entered Cardano, I, after learning about the technicalities uh, along the road, I started a minting uh, service for NFT projects. So, cool. yeah. so I'm already in contact with, uh, with many, um, uh, NFT projects that the actual owners like, uh, ugly bros, uh, overexposed, um, jarheads. Um, so, so yeah, so in, in, in essence, we already are in contact and we are in a good uh, terms with these projects and they will definitely be one of the first projects, um, to, to enter the platform or use the platform. And what about the stake pool operator side? I think that's probably easier to engage with. You put a tweet out <laughs> Actually, and a hundred stake yeah. pool operators will jump on. <laughs> but but also also because when I first started, uh, Hasila also had the same um, engagement in Twitter, is that whenever you enter Cardano, uh, I don't know uh, what what's the... Um, the actual reason, but I feel it's always the same entry uh, roadmap. Is that you started uh, you started knowing the SPOs, and from there you 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 keep your uh, your way. So I think each any person uh, that who are active on Twitter has at least ten or twenty SPOs that are in their <laughs> uh, in their list. Yeah, they need yeah, delegation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do. So, so we're all here going, please delegate, please delegate. Yes. So it's the same message over and over again. Single pool, please. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> yes, yes. It's really good in a way because like the state mm-hmm. pool operators are continuously educating Definitely. people about yes. decentralization, yes. how the True. protocol works, mm-hmm. how to stake and how to keep your funds safe as yes. well. So I'm not surprised that you do have lots of uh, connection there already. Right, but, but that's really good. You've got NFT projects on board through the minting service. You've got your SPOs, which you've uh, connected on with uh, early in the process. you got your team already in place as well. You're building up the platform and in a really simple and easy way and then evolving it later in the future. But what about funding? How are you guys going to pay for all this? Like uh, I'm assuming you've got servers, you've got uh, media production to do, marketing, all these different things. How are you funding yourselves? Yeah, well, uh, we have a project catalyst uh, proposal uh, running right now. Gotcha. Uh, so if you are watching this interview and you register to uh, this round, please uh, give us a, a vote <laughs> if you like mm-hmm. our idea. That is. So yeah. So so the concept is that we want to make something for the community by the community. Yeah. Um. The the actual platform will be essentially almost free. So. We have in the uh, fact um, section, uh, the frequent asked question is that, will it cost SPOs or NFT projects to join this platform? And the answer written is that, no, there isn't any actual cost, but there is in order to make sure after we get funded that we still pay for uh, our servers to keep running and also to keep um promoting and having some um, media and advertisement is that we take, we share uh, with each SPO, if they mint a block and they have rewards, we share two ADA per epoch. So it's almost just just the uh, as low as we can make it so that they don't feel they are actually, um, uh, there are any costs for using ADA link. At the same time, we just make sure uh, annually we will be able to cover these uh, expenses in order for the uh, uh, platform to, to sustain itself. Okay. All right. So that's that's what I was getting at, how you can sustain yourself over the years to keep the platform going. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the, the architecture of the site and exactly how you'd build it and how much resources would it take. It's pretty much just a, a matchmaking site, fairly static. It shouldn't cost too much. You're not running exactly. any nodes or anything. So mm-hmm. it seems pretty straightforward. So that's, mm-hmm. that could work out for you guys. 
So that's all really good. I absolutely love the approach, what you're doing, building for the community as well and getting the funding through Project Catalyst. Like I said, highly encourage uh, anyone that is considering voting in this round, Fund 9, to check out your proposal as well and consider it for voting. But guys, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast and sharing AdaLink and a little bit about what it's all about, how you guys are building and everything else around it. Where can people go to sign up if they're an SPO or an NFT project or uh, just to check out the proposal and what, they, what you guys are trying to do? See, uh, there, is, there, there are actually a, a handful of links. Yeah. You, can, uh, you can visit the, the actual website, uh, which is adalink.io. And uh, we can also... Um, you can find the Catalyst proposal link there. Um, there is uh, our uh, other uh, uh, related links like media um, account, um, Vimeo account, and also our GitHub repo. Uh, repo. Um, there is also uh, the, the form that Hasila talked about. So we are already starting, uh, started gathering uh, some insight and feedback from SPOs about what they would like to see in this platform uh, from all aspects, uh, being it how they, they would like to share the rewards. Um, even though we already have a plan, we would like to even have, uh, if we hear other ideas, we can implement them in the future and try to always better uh, the, the, the platform. So, so yeah, these are the links that uh, can be um, visited to, to get more info about uh, our uh, project. All right. So adalink.io, I'll make sure I put all the links, references, everything else in the show notes so everyone can find out a little bit more about the project. But Gisela Mahoud, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure learning a little bit more and uh, I'll make sure this one is out before Project Catalyst Fund 9 goes for voting. So good luck with that all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Now, I'll put all the links down below for you. So if you are interested in supporting the project, supporting their development, what they're doing as well, you can check out their Catalyst proposals. Link's all there for you. Check it out. If you like it, please consider adding it to your vote list and voting for them in Fund9 and Project Catalyst. They're doing some really cool, innovative things. But if you really like Kadana-related content and the stuff we do on our podcast here and on the YouTube channel, please consider giving us that thumbs up. Click subscribe, click on the notification bell, and you'll see more from me real soon yeah, yeah gotta do it like that you've been listening to the learn cardano podcast gotta get it hype crypto is what we like but this is not investment or financial advice gotta do your research because it's risky we know it is this show is educational and it's informative crypto's the future really it ain't no debate